Metabolism As the definition goes, it's a set of life-sustaining chemical transformations within the cells of an individual. To put it more simply, it's the sum total of all the chemical reactions taking place inside our body. Now, an average 70 kg adult needs about 1900 to 2900 kilocalories of energy from metabolic fuels. By metabolic fuels, we are focusing on three main components. Carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Now, what's the purpose of metabolism? Number one, digestion of food. Number two, intra and intercellular transport of substances. Number three, conversion of food to energy. And number four, elimination of harmful products. Now let us see what factors influence metabolism. Factor number one, age. Number two, is size of the individual. And number three, is physical exercise. Metabolism was found to be more in infants than in adults. It also increases proportionally with the size of the individual. And of course, metabolism is more when we are exercising. Other factors include Number one is gender, being more in males than in females. Second is climate, being more in the tropics than in the temperate zones. Hormonal factors like thyroxine or T4 also influence metabolism. Last but not the least, fever and illness. Metabolic reactions can be categorized into three subtypes. Number one is catabolism or catabolic pathway, which is the breakdown of complex and larger molecules into simpler ones. Glycolysis being the example where glucose is broken down into pyruvate. Second one is the anabolism or the anabolic pathway. It is the synthesis of larger and complex molecules from simpler ones. Basically, the opposite of catabolism, a classical example being glycogenesis or the synthesis of glycogen from glucose. A third one being the amphibolic pathway, which basically acts as a link between the catabolic and the anabolic pathway. A very good example of this is the citric acid cycle. Metabolism basically acts as a balance between the catabolism and the anabolism. Now let us see what happens if either of them becomes more or less. In the first case let us assume anabolism is greater than catabolism, which happens mainly when we intake metabolic fuels more than expenditure of energy. In that case, the excess of fuel is converted into triacylglycerols and is stored in adipose tissue as fats leading to obesity. In the second case, when catabolism exceeds anabolism, firstly fats and carbohydrates are broken down for the production of energy, and th when their resources deplete, proteins are then broken down by gluconeogenesis for the production of energy. Now since muscles are mainly made up of proteins, it leads to muscle wastage, emaciation and finally death. Now let us take an overall view of metabolism. The dietary carbohydrates that we intake are broken down by carbohydrates present in the GI tract into simpler sugars like glucose and the uh, dietary lipids they are all broken down by lipases into fatty acids and glycerol. Similarly the proteins they too undergo catabolism in the GI tract by proteases to form amino acids. Now these three end products catabolize to form a common intermediate known as acetyl coenzyme A. Now these acetyl coenzyme A undergoes oxidation in the citric acid cycle to form CO2 
or carbon dioxide and also produce reducing equivalents like NADH and FADH which later entered the electron transport chain for biological oxidation and produce ATP. It's also to be noted that the acetyl coenzyme A may be also used for the synthesis of cholesterol or the synthesis of ketone bodies. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we'll take a look at the transport and fate of major carbohydrates, amino acids, and fatty acid substrates and their metabolites.